27 applications, 4 months, 2 interviews, and a whole lot of rejections later. This is the story of how I landed my first ever UX design internship with zero previous experience. To give you all the full picture, we're going to need to rewind back to August of 2020. I was just going into my first year of engineering at the University of Waterloo and honestly the imposter syndrome was already setting in. A few of my friends already had previous internship experience from high school and here I was with no coding experience and also still completely clueless on what UX even was. And in case you're not familiar with UX or user experience design quite yet, no worries, that's why I'm here. It's basically the process of designing products that provide meaningful experiences to users, including but not limited to designing for content, usability, function, and branding slash visual design. Anyway, at that point in August, all I knew was that I was going to start recruiting for my summer internship in around four to five months, so January of 2021. It was also around this time that I stumbled upon an upper year Emily Louie's website portfolio, and I saw how she worked for the Ontario Digital Service, which is the Ontario government's internal design agency, as a product designer. As I was reading through her case study, I honestly thought it was so cool that she got to work on products being used by millions of people across the province. This was actually my first time hearing the term UX design and I basically entered university on the lookout for opportunities to learn more about the field. And since I was going into engineering and not a UX design program, I didn't exactly have the opportunity to build relevant UX experience within the classroom, which is why I turned to side projects. If you're a new or aspiring designer, doing a side or personal project and writing it up as a case study is honestly one of the best things you can do just to build that relevant experience. Whether it's a hackathon project or just a one-person shebang it's a really great way to get your feet wet in the world of UX. As for my first project, I teamed up with some high school friends who are also going to Waterloo to build a mobile voice journal that actually tracks your emotions for you based on your tone of voice and what you say. This kind of started off as more of a data science project, but I really wanted to gain experience with building some sort of digital product. Since I basically had no idea what I was doing, I read a ton of Medium articles and watched a bunch of YouTube videos to get myself off the ground. Eventually, I was able to scope out what features I wanted in the product based on some user needs, as well as creating wireframes and continuing to iterate upon my designs in Figma. In the meantime, as I was creating all these prototypes, I was also working with my team in Android Studio to figure out how to actually build this thing. Long story short, we never got a fully functioning app. We got certain bits and parts of it to work. While working on this project, I discovered that UX is something that I actually actually really enjoyed and wanted to continue learning about and continue working on. I also joined UWX, which is basically Waterloo's community for design. I went to all of their virtual events to A, meet with more student designers and B, learn about different topics such as designing for accessibility and also writing good copy. By the time winter break rolled around, I knew that I wanted to find a design internship. In addition to a design-oriented resume, most designers also have a portfolio website where they have case studies. And these case studies are honestly one of the most important things in the recruitment process as employers will typically look at this to gauge your past experience. Case studies are basically write-ups of your past projects where you show off things like your design process, the user insights that you collected, as well as the user interface and overall experience of the thing that you designed. Since I had no front-end dev experience, I turned to free online resources like Free Code Camp's responsive web development course, which I highly recommend in addition to watching YouTube videos on front-end and dev basics. So now that I had an idea of how I was going to build the website, I needed to know exactly what I was going to put on it. So I turned to this resource called Cofolios.io, which is a collection of some really well done student web portfolios. These are sorted by company, so I went through and found some that I really liked. And from that, I was able to better understand what a case study kind of looks like and what a successful case study looks like, what aspects they include, so on and so forth. From there, I started writing my own case studies as well. Throughout this process, I was also prototyping my website in Figma, and once I had a good idea of what I wanted it to look like, I turned back to VS Code and cranked out my website throughout the winter break. Though I will note, literally the first Monday back from the break, I sat down, had a good one-to-one -one with the website, and decided that I kind of hated it. So from there, I decided to scrap everything and just start again from scratch. And about a week or so of all-nighters later, 
here is what I finished up with. As you can see, it's pretty basic. It has a little intro greeting as well as my case studies and an about section and a link to my resume. Now that I had both my design resume and my portfolio website handy, I was all ready to dive into Waterloo's internal job board, Waterloo Works. Even though there were literally thousands of jobs posted, it felt like 99% of them were all software related. I found about 20 design jobs, all of which I put into this handy, very beautiful little notion table to stare at for a week before finally buckling down and applying to all of them within the span of a couple of nighters. So pro tip, don't do what I did and procrastinate because writing 10 cover letters in one sitting is not the most fun, but it is doable. Now that I had all of my applications in, basically all I had to do was check Waterloo Works at every single spare moment, which was not necessary at all, but it was really interesting to go in and see all of them trickle in. The rejections. All in all, I applied to 26 jobs total, the 20 design jobs I just mentioned, as well as six to seven front end dev jobs. None of which I heard back from, which is understandable because I wouldn't have hired my past self as a front end dev either. But eventually I did get two interviews, one of which was with a local startup and the second of which was the Ontario Digital Service or the ODS. And for me, this was actually one of my top choices because it's the role that first got me interested in design. Since I had never done any design interviews in the past, I didn't really have a good idea of what to expect. So naturally, in times of confusion, you turn to YouTube. I watched a bunch of design interview videos that went over the typical questions that are asked, but I still didn't have a super great idea. Luckily, I also found UWUX's office hours. So I went to those and I spoke with an upper who was so, so immensely helpful with the whole interview process. She told me that during design interviews, you typically have a presentation where you show them your past work. And for that presentation, you usually have a slide deck, which I was not aware of until the night before my first interview. Both of my interviews also followed a fairly similar format. For the startup interview, I was first asked some behavioral questions so the basic, tell me about yourself, why do you want to work here, why are you interested in design, before moving on to a presentation that I gave about Sentimo, the voice journal app. After I presented my little slide deck, the interviewer asked me about my design decisions. So getting me to explain why I chose certain requirements, how I did any user research, which I didn't really because I wasn't following a clear process, and also getting me to explain why I would implement certain features over others. As for how the interview went overall, I had a pretty okay feeling, like it wasn't the worst, but it definitely could have also been better. But with my second interview with the Ontario Digital Service, it was honestly completely different, but also still somewhat similar. So for this interview, they actually split it into two sections. The first of which was a 30 minute info session where they gathered all the interviewees in the morning. Basically during the session, they told us things like how much we were getting compensated, what the workspace would have been like if we weren't doing a remote internship, and a little bit more about our role. During my actual interview, which was a little bit later in the day, I actually really liked their interview format because they had a slide deck being presented and each time they would ask you a question, the slide would just show the question and the amount of time that they recommend you take to answer it. That was super helpful for me because honestly, I usually, not usually, but I lose my train of thought when talking a lot. So I definitely appreciated that. As for the content of this interview, we started off with a 10 minute presentation of my personal project, which was again, Sentimo, before moving on to some behavioral questions like what are the top three traits of a designer and a design critique of the current Ontario.ca COVID website. So basically they showed me the website and asked me what changes I would make and my logic behind those. Finally, we finished with a little whiteboarding challenge. The prompt was if you had to design a vaccine passport for Ontarians, what would be your process and how would you do that? Walking out of this interview, I had a pretty good feeling about it. I think I did my best and the interviewer was very personable, so he definitely passed the vibe check. The whole thing felt more like a chat as opposed to a super uptight interview. So at the end of the day, I was pretty happy with myself. A little while after the interviews, I remember very distinctly, I was lying down in my mom's bed because it's a lot bigger than my own. And I was kind of just going on my phone as you, as you do. And I saw this email from the ODS offering me the job and honestly at that point I literally jumped out and just gave like a victory yell. I was like yes but 
I don't know, you, you probably didn't need to see that. Um, the point was I was really excited and really happy and kind of surprised. So it was just a lot of emotions. And my brother actually came into the room because he thought something was wrong and he was also pretty kind of annoyed with me for making that loud noise, but I think it was worth, it was worth it, okay? Of course, I emailed back um, saying that I would be more than happy to accept the offer, and that is where I have been for the last three and a half months with the Ontario government. As someone who came into this internship with very little design experience, so again, about four months worth of personal projects, I was just blown away by the amount of support that I had, and I was especially glad to pick up some industry standards when it came to things like the design process and user research. I also got to explore some of my interests in inclusive and accessible design at the workplace as well, which was pretty awesome. And of course, a huge shout out to my coworkers, especially the amazing co-ops. Even though I'm wrapping up my internship next week, honestly, I know I have so much more to learn in design and I'll always be really grateful to the ODS for giving me this opportunity to dip my toes into product design. If you wanna see what I actually do in a day as a product slash UX designer, then stay tuned for next week's video or whenever it comes out, but hopefully next week. And if you wanna be sure that you don't miss it, please feel free to subscribe. I mean, it, it is your call, but the button is also right there so you could just click it now and get it over with but again it's up to you so anyway as always thank you so much for watching and i will catch you in the next one see ya